Good morning. I am Antonio Marchetto, Regulation Officer for our main aircraft system at EASA. And together with uh, my colleague Volker Asmeyer, uh, I'm going to introduce you today to a practical guide to uh, design verification project for unmanned aircraft systems. So, first of all, how do you trigger a design verification project? Um, you need to carry out, as an applicant, a specific operational risk assessment. This risk assessment can be carried out uh, in two, basically two cases. One case is uh, uh, you are already in contact as an applicant with the National Aviation Authority and you want to obtain an operational authorization. The second case that we see quite often is uh, uh, as an applicant you do it as part of a business strategy. Uh, at the end of this phase uh, you need to ask basically three questions. Is the sale uh, three or four? Uh, the sale is the specific assurance and integrity level and you can consider it as a measure of the risk of the operation. Three or four means medium risk. Second question is, uh, are any mitigation means, technical mitigation means used with the UIS, with, which have been used to uh, decrease uh, the risk of the operation? And the third question is, uh, is uh, uh, the possible uh, containment enhanced meaning if the drones breaches in adjacent areas and goes outside flights outside from the operational volume, will this lead to a significant re uh, risk? If the answer to any of this question is yes, then an EASA design verification project can be triggered. The main case is the first one, sale three or four, which brings to a full design verification project on the UIS design. In uh, uh, the second and the third case, uh, you have uh, a more contained uh, verification project, uh, either on the containment features of the uh, UIS or on the mitigation means. Now, consider <coughs> uh, we have provided already several presentations on design verification projects. The perfect background for this presentation is provided by the first uh, hyperlink that you see on this slide, which leads you to a video. If you will have any doubts, uh, I'm sure that if you will look at this video, we, you will fill all the knowledge gaps. Uh, so, first case, full design verification project on the UIS design. As you can well imagine, this means uh, having uh, been capable to substantiate a set of requirements. These requirements are provided by Special Condition Light UIS. You see uh, the hyperlink also there. And uh, this is a special condition, high-level special condition issued by EASA uh, last year. So, how to substantiate this requirement? Um, first of all, the UIS. <coughs> of course, it has to be sufficiently defined, not only for those aspects like uh, dimension of the UIS, cruise speed, kinetic energy, which are uh, absolutely necessary to carry out the risk assessment. So how to define the means of compliance for special condition light UIS? Use the hyperlink shown on this slide, and uh, uh, you will find a table which is defined for sale three and for sale four and for each requirement of special condition light UAS. With this table, you will see at which level of integrity you will have to define the means of compliance for each of the requirements. Level of integrity can be low, medium or high. Now, and how to proceed practically? Uh, we suggest to, uh, first of all, go to the Airworthiness Drone Project website. This project has uh, assessed and scored standards uh, for application to the operational objective, safety objective of the SORA. And uh, this year, we'll port this assessment directly to the Special Condition Light UIS. As EASA, we have not uh, formally adopted the output of this project. However, we suggest to start from this and to assess the technical appropriateness of uh, the standards assessed by the project for uh, your uh, design verification project. <coughs> Eventually, you will look at these standards, you will uh, uh, compare it with uh, the needs of your project, you will take section of standard to formulate your uh, requirements, and sometimes you will see that they are not appropriate for your project, you will formulate your own. Sometimes you will see that there are gaps identified by the project itself, and you will have there actually to 
really define your own means of compliance and propose them to us. So at the end of this phase, you will have the requirement, you will have a proposed means of compliance, we, you will discuss with us uh, the means uh, uh, of compliance in an incremental way, and finally we will agree upon this means of compliance, and given your good knowledge of the UIS as per previous slide, you will be set up to begin actually the substantiation according to the means of compliance. These slides show you a more limited design verification project on containment features. In this case, only uh, the requirement 2511 on the special condition is triggered, and there are some aspects. One is the probability of leaving the operational volume, which makes me appropriately low, and no single failure criteria, and development standard for software and hardware electronic hardware, if there is an error, there is a possibility of an error of this software and hardware electronic hardware, which may lead directly to the exit in the adjacent volumes. Means of compliance. In this case, they are taken from uh, the SORA regarding the 10 to the minus 4 probability per flight hour of exit in the adjacent volumes. But depending on the scenario in the adjacent areas, we may even have more uh, restrictive requirements. And uh, consider when terminated, the aircraft must always crash in the ground buffer, within the ground buffer, and not in the adjacent volume. Let's now see a more limited design verification project on containment features. In this case, the only requirement trigger of special condition at UAS is 2511. Aspects are basically those shown in the slide. The probability of leaving the operational volume must be appropriately low. There must be no single failure leading to a, a crash uh, in the uh, adjacent uh, areas. And software and hardware electronic hardware must be developed to appropriate standard in case an error might lead directly to uh, an exit in the adjacent volumes. What are the means of compliance to 2511? They are taken uh, partly from the SORA, step 9. In particular, the requirements for 10 to the minus 4 per flight hour, these uh, um, safety objectives. But consider, depending on the scenario in adjacent areas, uh, you may uh, find even uh, stricter uh, requirements in terms of uh, uh, probability of leaving in uh, the, the operational area and entering the adjacent volumes. Consider that a typical means that we see very appropriate to uh, meet this requirement is a segregated flight termination system. And consider also that uh, when the uh, aircraft is terminated, uh, the aircraft must crash within, strictly within the ground buffer and not in the adjacent volumes. Um, second possibility for a design verification project, a more limited, is also for ground risk mitigation. In this case, the only requirement trigger is 2512. Mitigation means must have the adequate level of performance. <coughs> the means of compliance for these requirements are uh, taken from the SORA, and they have a quantitative uh, part and a qualitative part. And uh, uh, as we see from applicant, the usual means proposed to meet these requirements are parachute installation, because here we are really talking of a um, containment on the dynamics of the drone, so a, a reduction of the kinetic energy, uh, such that uh, the probability to cause fatality is lowered. But also consider a parachute installation also goes to reduce uh, typically the crash area and also this leads to a reduction of the risk. Sometimes we see the bus installation as uh, proposed and uh, also the frangible design. A drones uh, which have a frangible design transmits, uh, tend to transmit less kinetic energy to uh, any people it may crash upon. Hello, my name is Volker Ansmeyer. I'm section manager of the eVTOL and Light UAS section. Uh, we are in charge of then performing the design verification activities, and in this context, I'm guiding you a bit through the various steps that are needed there. You've already heard from Antonio about the assessments to be performed by you before filling the application to us. Now, I think it's now time to really fill the application. For that one, please use the format that you can find on our website. And use also the filling instructions, which are linked on the last page. Um, then, with this initial information, we will perform an initial review, uh, which will allow us to see whether your application and the proposed design is, in principle, acceptable. In particular, when you have features which might be life-threatening, it's something where we might raise questions to you before accepting it. Uh, then, with this information, 
we will go to accept your application. We will then assign internally an EASA project manager who will then also involve relevant experts for the domains to be investigated. And he will also arrange an applicant's meeting with you to kick off the project. This will then lead to a familiarization with your project, with your conops, with the sale level, and with your proposed means of compliance, which might, in certain cases, raise questions uh, from our side, and we might need to agree on changes thereto or uh, certain uh, complementary information. Now, also on this information, we will base, after this familiarization, our engagement, our uh, participation to tests that you are going to perform or other activities which might require some witnessing activities from our side. But most of the times, most of the activities will be conducted by you yourself. You will carry out tests along a test program that we agreed upon before. And eventually you will submit the required documentation like the substantiations, analysis reports, procedures, um, manuals, as agreed before. Then, with all that data, um, it's taking some time. And that's one of the urgent questions from all of you. What about the duration? Well, it depends. It also de it very much depends on the completeness and the comprehensiveness of your data. The better the things are prepared, the easier going is through the activities with us. Which brings me to the next slide. Actually, when all the tests are completed successfully, all the compliance reports are acceptable, and the relevant procedures are acceptable as well, then it's time for us to prepare the verification report. And this verification report will demonstrate that your UAS is compliant to the relevant OZOs that we have identified before. With this design verification report, you will find all these elements replicated, partially based on reports from your side, partially on complementary data that we implement uh, related to limitations, conditions, restrictions, whatever is necessary in order to stay within the sale under those conditions. And then these core data will be published on the EASA website. Once the design verification report is issued, it's your report. And the use of it depends on your needs and decisions. So whether you want to use it by yourself on your own operations or whether you want to sell data together with your design elements uh, to others, it depends on you. But what about design changes? Well, those can invalidate the report, either in total or at least partially. We can identify in the report already areas which might not be affected by changes, whereas other changes then would lead to the need to re-verify these elements. Uh, however, the extent of those investigations would be limited because we only need to look at those changed elements and the complementary affected areas. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. And please stay tuned to the data and information that we share on our website on the specific category drones, where we also share all the latest information. And we'll soon publish also the list of design verification reports that we issued. Thank you.